हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू आर गाइस डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम टू जावा चार्टर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कवर द रिमेनिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन विच माई फ्रेंड एक्सपीरियंस एट जे पी मॉर्गन फॉर मुंबई लोकेशन इफ यू गाइस हैवेंट वॉच द पार्ट वन प्लीज टू चेक आउट एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू ऑल दैट this interview questions uh, are faced by my uh, uh, my friend uh, who shared these questions with me so these are the real interview questions uh, whatever questions he could remember he had uh, make a note of it and he shared with me yeah so let's continue uh, from where uh, we left uh, previously in the part 1 i will uh, i will share the part 1 url uh, in the comment as well as in the description so question number 11 print out a uh, print the count of employees with respective months given employee table with id and uh, date of uh, joining month and the hint was given is user count and group by to print the count of employees with the respective months from the employee table with id and the date of joining month you can use the following sql query select date of join month count star as number employees from employee table group by date of joining month this query will group the employees by date of joining month and count the number of employees in each group the result will show the date of joining month and the corresponding count of employees hired on that month question number 12 how can a listener listen to kafka q how does the topic work in kafka so to answer this question in order to listen to a kafka q as a listener we need to use a kafka consumer which can subscribe to kafka topic and receive message from it in real time a kafka topic is a category or feed named to which messages are published topics in kafka are divided into partitions which allows for parallel processing and high scalability when a producer sends a message to a topic in kafka it gets replicated to one or more partitions based on the message key each partition is an ordered immutable sequence of records that is continually appended to kafka uses a publish subscribe model where messages are sent to a topic and then consumed by one or more consumers consumers can choose which topics and partitions they want to subscribe to and will receive messages from each partition in order they were sent multiple consumers in a group can also operate on the same topic and the same partition to process the messages in parallel to summarize to listen to a kafka queue as a listener you need to kaf you need a kafka consumer that subscribes to a topic and consume messages in real time kafka topics are divided into partitions which allows for a parallel processing and high scalability and multiple consumers can operate on the same topic and partition to process messages in parallel question number 13 what is the difference between uh, the minus x and minus x s arguments in java so in java the minus x and minus x s arguments are used to set the jvm that is java virtual machine options uh, the minus x arguments are generally used to set the size of heap which is the memory used for dynamic memory allocation during the execution of the program some common minus x arguments include the minus xms which sets the maximum size of the heap minus xms sorry the earlier was minus xmx and minus xms sets the initial size of heap and minus xmn sets the size of new generation in the heap So on the other hand the minus xs arguments are used uh, for more detail and advanced jvm options some advanced minus xs arguments includes a uh, minus xs uh, colon plus use g1 gc enables the use of the garbage first garbage collector minus xs colon plus unlock experimental vm options unlock experimental jvm options minus xx colon max meta space size sets the maximum size of the meta space which is used to show the class metadata the main difference between minus x and minus xs arguments is that minus x arguments are standard and well defined and are likely to be supposed across across all the jvm op- implementations whereas minus xs arguments are more advanced and experimental and may not be sub- supported or might behave differently on different jvm implementations question number 14 explain the uh, different areas of java heap so in java the heap is the runtime data where uh, objects are stored and managed uh, the java heap is divided into a uh, different areas each with uh, its own unique functions so uh, one is eden space this is the newly created object are initially stored uh, when the eden space is full the garbage collector removes the dead object and moves the surviving object uh, to uh, the survivor space 
then there is a survivor space uh, this is where objects are stored when they have survived a garbage collection in the eden space objects that are still alive after several round of gc in the survival space are moved to a tenuous space tenuous space uh, this is where long lived objects are stored the garbage collector runs less frequently in the tenuous space because objects stored have generally take longer to become eligible for the garbage collection then there is a pump gen there is a permanent generation space this space is used to store metadata about the classes methods fields and other structural information about the application in java 8 and later versions pump gen was replaced with meta space which allows a dynamic allocation of memory for class metadata then there is a code cache this area is used to store compiled code generated by just in time compiler which compiles java bytecode into native machine code at runtime However, there is a one difference we should note regarding the pump gen space in the earlier version of Java before Java 8. Pump gen was space used to store metadata about the classes, methods, fields and the other structural information about the application. However, in Java 8, pump gen has been replaced by the meta space. Can a system dot exit text a negative value? So uh, the answer is in Java, the system.exit method is used to terminate the currently running Java virtual machine and its underlying operating system process. The method takes an integer code as an argument that indicates the exit status of the JVM. The exit status is a non-negative integer. According to the Java documentation, a status code of zero indicates successful termination while non-zero status code indicates abnormal termination. There is no specification for negative status codes and there are generally not recommended to be used. Therefore, passing a negative value to system.exit method is not recommended and may result in undefined behavior or exceptions depending on how the operating system handles it. Okay. Uh, question number 16. Write a program to sort elements of a list in predefined order. So here is a Java program that sorts the element of list in predefined order. So as you guys can see, uh, uh, there's a class with the name sort list and uh, inside the main method, we have creating a list uh, of a string type uh, using an array list and we have supplied apple, banana, pear and orange uh, in the list. Now there is a one map of uh, type string and integer. So string is a key uh, int uh, and integer is uh, values in a predefined order of a new linked hash map. So uh, if we see we have put uh, banana, apple, orange uh, with the uh, value 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and after that we are doing a collection dot sort uh, of the list. Okay. Uh, using a predefined order uh, and then uh, using a for loop uh, when we print this uh, 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 string then we can see the output in a predefined order so let's in this program we first get a list of string object by uh, object that is a my list here you can see okay and uh, we then create a predefined order map that specifies the predefined ordering of the elements in the list uh, as I uh, explained earlier and then when we use a collection.sort method to sort the elements in the list based on the order specified in the predefined map the comparator used in the sort method compares the element based on their values okay key and values so values in the map finally we print the sorted list when we run this uh, program the output should be banana, apple, orange and pear question number 17 what is the default uh, thread pool used by comparator uh, sorry, completable future. So answer is in Java, the completable future class provides a way to perform asynchronous task and manage their results. When a completable feature is created without specifying an executor explicitly, it uses a default fork join pool dot common pool as its thread pool. This is same thread pool used by a parallel stream method of Java 8 stream. The common pool is a static instance of fork join pool class, which is a thread pool specifically designed for executing recursive divide and conquer algorithms. It uses a work stealing algorithm where idle thread steal tasks from busy threads, thus maximizing sweep you utilization and minimizing thread overhead. Question number 18 How to calculate the thread pool size based on the number of CPU cores? This is very interesting question. Uh, the answer. Uh, the answer of this question when determining optimal size for a thread pool in Java it is generally recommended to uh, base it on the number of CPU cores available the following formula can be used to calculate the optimal size uh, for the thread pool so number of thread pool equal to number of CPU cores uh, multiply by utilization factors when the utilization factor should typically be between 0.5 and 1 depending on the nature of the task to be executed and other factors such as uh, IO and network latency Okay, and uh, so uh, if I uh, tell about the program, so here uh, is a Java program of uh, uh, the name with example thread pool and inside the main method, uh, we, we are creating the integer available processor equal to runtime dot get runtime dot available processors and the uh, utilization factor of type double uh, with 0.8 and uh, pool size of type integer uh, as mentioned in the previous slides, uh, we are multiplying with the utilization factor. 
with the available processor and then uh, at the last line we can see thread pool dot shut down to shut down the thread pool when it is done so uh, the runtime dot get time to available processor uh, uh, we get the number of available processor using that uh, method and when then specify the utilization factor of 0.8 which means that we will aim to utilize 80 percent of the available cpu processor so here you can see right a double utilization factor is equal to 0.8 then uh, we uh, calculate the pool size by multiplying the number of available processor by uh, uh, by the utilization factor and casting the results to an integer finally we create a new fixed thread pool with the calculate pool size using executed dot now new fixed thread pool of type pool size and then use the thread pool to execute the sum task when done we shut down the thread pool using thread pool dot shut down uh, question number 19 what is service discovery so this uh, question was in uh, with respect to microservices uh, and service discovery is a design pattern in software architecture that enables dynamic detection uh, and the discovery of services in a distributed system <coughs> it provides a mechanism <laughs> sorry guys it provides a mechanism for services to advertise their availability location and metadata and for the clients uh, to dynamically discover and use those services in a distributed system services can come and go uh, be added or removed and their locations may change over the time service discovery solves the problem of clients needing uh, to know the specific addresses and the ports of the servers and the services they want to use instead the clients just need to know the name of the identify a name or identifier of the services and service discovery mechanisms take care of the rest uh, uh, there are various approaches and technologies for in, uh, implementing service discovery such as using dedicated service registry like uh, console eureka or zookeeper in practice a service registry acts uh, as a database for service locations and provides an api for client applications to query and register services alternatively service discovery can be implemented using a peer-to-peer -peer network of services that communicate with one another or uh, to discover and locate services service discovery can greatly simplify the development and maintenance of the distributed applications by allowing services to evolve independently without backing compatibility and providing a flexible and scalability way to find user services question number 20 what is a blue green deployment strategy this is a very important question uh, the answer of this question is blue green deployment is a software deployment strategy that enables the release of a new applications or features without downtime or interpretation of the services this deployment strategy is a popular in context of web-based applications and cloud computing the basic idea of the blue green deployment strategy is to maintain two identical environments one is why live production environment usually referred to as the blue environment that is currently uh, serving traffic and the other is completely identical environment known as a green environment okay uh, so here is uh, how a typical blue green deployment works uh, the green environment is identical to the blue environment all incoming traffic is directed to the blue environment a new versions of application is deployed to the green environment once the deployment is complete traffic is redirected from blue environment to a green environment the blue environment is brought down or replaced and the process is repeated as needed question number 21 design down question how would you propose the solution of this problem so design down a parking lot with multiple entries and exit points to constant when a vehicle enters it should be directed to the closest, uh, closest empty slot and when the vehicle exits it should be directed towards the closest exit point okay so here is how you can design to design a solution for a parking lot with multiple entries and exit points that directs vehicles to closest empty slots and exit points, one approach would be used to combination of sensors, camera and the software algorithm. First, the parking lot would need to be equipped with the sensors and the cameras uh, placed at strategic location and detect the presence of vehicles and their movement. These sensors and cameras would connect it to a central processing system that would manage the parking lot's operations. Okay, uh, so uh, the central processing system would use algorithms to identify the closest empty slot to direct a vehicle entering a parking lot. It would uh, do this by calculating the distance between the vehicle's entrance point and the location of the available slots in the parking lot, the system would then direct the vehicle to nearest available slot. Similarly, when the vehicle is exiting the parking uh, lot, the system would direct to it to the nearest exit point by calculating the distance between the vehicle's location and the available exit points. Uh, to ensure that the algorithm is efficient, the system should have access to a real-time data about the occupancy status of the parking slots and the movement of the vehicles in the parking lot. Okay, so uh, here is how the step. A vehicle enters the parking lot through one of the entry points. The sensors and camera detects the presence of the vehicle and its locations. Uh, the central processing system calculates the distance between the vehicle's en uh, entry point and the location of the available slots in the parking lot and identifies the nearest available slot. The system directs the vehicle to the nearest available slot. The occupied status of the slot is updated in the system. When the vehicle is ready to leave the parking lot, it is detected by the sensors and cameras. The central processing system calculates the distance between the vehicle's location and the available exit point and identifies the clo uh, closest exit point right uh, yeah 
so thank you guys i hope uh, this series was uh, helpful uh, for the job seekers and here i would like to update that uh, uh, as i have settled in the new job uh, currently i might not have uh, the interview questions uh, okay so if, if in case if i get by my friends or junior colleagues i will surely uh, make a video of it and upload it uh, but till the time uh, i would like to uh, create a videos of the technologies which i am uh, learning uh, presently so yeah uh, it might not be uh, in the ordering uh, stage let's say because uh, presently i am learning scala i am learning aka i am learning jmx uh, 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 and then i am learning the snmp so what, uh, whatever the time whatever i learn i would like to create a video for you guys so that also uh, you know uh, uh, knowledge uh, will be shared uh, uh, by this yeah till the time i upload a new video bye bye take care and have a great weekend